Suburbia. The air is cleaner, streets less crowded, and there's no Puerto Ricans. It's the American dream of a Norman Rockwell white picket fence environment. But slithering right under the surface of that dream is a nightmare. Hi, I'm Mike Madrona with another edition of True Crime here. I'm here in Staten Island standing in front of this seemingly unassuming home. But on September 16th, 1994, this address was the scene of a tragic crime. This was the home of one Geppetto Bellafiore, a local toy maker and puppeteer. But what the good people of this community did not know was the dark secret Geppetto was hiding. I call this splinters of a wooden heart. Betrayal. Heartache. Abandonment. Some people go their whole life without experiencing pain. I went four seconds before the harshness of reality tore through the hymen of my innocence. Fear. Confusion. A madman's vice. From a puppet with strings to a puppet of flesh. My childhood robbed, my weakness exposed. Tattered and torn, this is my birth. Geppetto arrived at home on that fateful night with Pinocchio and a local drug dealer. The drug dealer produces a firearm and the situation starts to get serious. Geppetto produces the cash. But the dealer is not having it. Geppetto assures him everything is cool. The dealer accepts. And the nose candy is produced. Remember being on the table, there were some playing cards, you know, this weird mound of white powder. I now realize it was cocaine. And there was my master, Geppetto, and some stranger I'd never seen before. Almost instantly, Geppetto flies off the handle. I walked in to find my roommate Geppetto and a man with a gigantic mound of cocaine on my kitchen table. I had never seen a mound of cocaine that big in my life. As I proceeded to walk into the kitchen, they took my face and shoved it into the mound of cocaine, pulled my hair, threw me onto the floor, and rubbed it all over my body. Geppetto continued to demand that the fairy do cocaine. And soon she was staring at the barrel of a gun. They took me, they dragged me into the bedroom, and there was a toy on the bed. Geppetto and that large man made me turn that toy into a real boy. Um, at that point, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to, I didn't know what was going on. I knew that my life was at risk. I knew that 
they were doing something so ungodly and wrong that they can't couldn't be helped. And before I even could understand what was going on around me, I I was on a bed. And I I don't know what it was, the same magic that let me dance as wood brought me to life. No sooner did I feel like first breath of air hitting my lungs, I felt the clammy hands of my father figure pulling on my back. All the while, I tried to avoid looking my master in the face, and there was that stranger in the corner of the room getting some kind of sick enjoyment out of this. He had his gun to the fairy's head and his other hand down his pants, stroking this massive erection. Only made me glad that he left before he got his chance. But before the horror could take its next step, a phone call diffused the situation. I got out. I got out. And I just didn't know what to do. I wanted to go back. I wanted to save him. I wanted I wanted to take him with me. I wanted I wanted to do so many things, but I just I couldn't. I couldn't. Quite a harrowing tale. Our scientists here at True Crime were able to generate an image of what we think Geppetto may look like today. If you see Geppetto or my ex-wife and know anything about their whereabouts, please call the number you see at the bottom of the screen. Until then, I'm Mike Mangiorno saying, keep your eyes open, ears to the ground, sit on it, and spin. Priest. You have a heart on? Me? No.